And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another ROPE webinar. This one based upon the upcoming issue of the journal in which uh, our presenter today has a lead article. It will be in the April issue of ROPE. And I welcome uh, the author today, Julia Zakia, who is a research fellow in economics at the Department of Statistics of Sapienza University of Rome, where she teaches financial markets and institutions and gender economics, both in the Department of Statistics and in the Global Humanities Academic Program. She collaborates with the research NERVA um, on gender diversity and gender inequality. She holds a PhD in the history of economic thought. Her research interests extend to social and financial inclusion, gender economics and gender gaps in labor markets and in academia. Her ongoing research projects are on the impact of sexual harassment on wage gaps and on the identification of the contribution of women to development of the economic thought, trying to remote to remove the ignorance about who were the women pioneers of economics. She's one of the founders of the working group on gender economics for the Young Scholars Initiative of INET. She's a member of the executive committee of STORUP, the Italian Association for the History of Political Economy, the board of the journal Moneta e Credito. She will present her paper today called, What Does It Take to Be Top Women Economists? And we also have comments, uh, commentary today by uh, Rebecca Gomez Betancourt, who is a professor of economics at the University of Lyon 2 Lumière and a researcher at Triangle Research Center. Uh, she got her PhD in economics at the University of Sorbonne, Paris. She has held appointments as visiting professor in Colombia, Brazil, and Chicago. She served as president of the French Association for the History of Economic Thought and is currently part of the executive committee of the Re European Society for the History of Economic Thought and the Latin American Society for the History of Economics. Focuses on the history of monetary thought and on women and economics. She is currently working on the history of feminist economics and gender economics. Um, thank you very much. Um, the way uh, it's going to work basically is uh, Julia is going to present her paper in about 30 minutes or so, more or less, and then we'll go to a quick commentary by Rebecca and then we'll open it to the floor. Uh, Julia. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Luis Philippe, for this introduction and for organizing that. Uh, and let me, I mean, thanks also, Rebecca, Rebecca that I mean, we are all involved uh, in another project also with Lita and some other people that are here uh, for the Young Scholar Committee for the YAFI. And so we want also to embrace this new I mean, issue in the mentoring for. Uh, younger uh, feminist economist and uh, a free space uh, to discuss about the issues. I will share my screen. So actually I have the presentation. So uh, just give me one second. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so perfect. This is a, the um, a wonderful pictures that we were commenting before. I mean, thank you, Luis Deli, for getting that. So actually, um, I will start with uh, uh, the main and <laughs> motivation of uh, the paper that I wrote and that will be uh, published in the next uh, um, in the next issue of Rope uh, uh, among top uh, economists. So actually, if we see, I mean, the different dimensions of uh, diversity and so uh, different dimensions of of excellence. And so, for example, if we uh, consider just the top five journals, that actually is one of the main measures, uh, mainstream measures to measure uh, merit and excellence uh, in our profession, we can say that, I mean, the share of uh, women in uh, that publishing that uh, journals is quite few. And this is, I mean, a hey, article, a quotation by Hengel and Mu that uh, analyzed deeply I mean, the presence of uh, women in uh, top five journals. And as you can see, I mean, uh, there has been an increase, but still, I mean, the share of women authors in top five journals is just the 14%. But not only the visibility of women in top five journals is low, but also it's lower uh, the gatekeeping power for, I mean, publishing in uh, that kind of journals for getting a tenure. And this is, I mean, an analysis that has been 
conducted by the Hackman and Mockton, a paper well known that is published in the INET website, uh, where I mean, they find out, and this is also in quotation from them, uh, that for women to gain a tenure, a tenure positions in uh, US uh, um, department, uh, women tend to have a higher bar to reach uh, the tenure track. And so they have to publish at least one uh, more uh, article in the top five journals to get the same probability than their male colleagues to get the same um, position, the same tenure track and tenure positions. But if we consider, I mean, as measures of excellence, uh, not uh, the, just the publication in the top five journals, but just, I mean, some uh, aggregating ranking of individuals, I mean, the situation is even worse. And uh, I mean, if we look, for example, at Web of Science uh, that collects a list of global highly cited researchers and in the compartment for economics, we have just the 8.8% .8 of women in that list. If we use corpus that has a list that uh, is uh, composed by the most cited uh, authors, uh, that's also correct for set citations uh, for um, the age, the academic age of each authors. Still, the representation, the share of women in that the list of top economists is still low. It's just the 8.9%. But if we use REPAC, that actually uh, right now it could be considered one of uh, the biggest um, database uh, for economics. Uh, and also for, I mean, uh, uh, in the logic of having, I mean, uh, a lot of publications and a lot of authors coming from uh, different countries, uh, still, I mean, uh, the share of women in a list uh, that they compute for the 10, top 10% 10 author list, so uh, the authors in, uh, in REPAC, we have just... Uh, 7.6% of women. Uh, so we have just uh, 250 women among almost 3,000 top economists listed in that, uh, in that list. And uh, I mean, these are numbers that uh, uh, you should remember because I mean, this is the main focus and the, the data that I will analyze in my paper. So my main question is why we have so few women in this top uh, list. So actually, um, uh, what is my main point of the paper and the motivations of the paper is uh, to stress and to have some evidence that excellence and all these measures uh, conducted also uh, looking at rankings of individuals are uh, socially constructed concept. So actually, uh, this is uh, something that comes and is grounded on uh, a, a psychological and sociological literature uh, that underline how excellence is used as a tool, consciously or not, to support uh, some hierarchies, uh, practices, social norms that tend to underpin an hegemonic uh, system. So actually, uh, what uh, is my main point I mean, and the main motivation of uh, my analysis is that, I mean, the first step to disrupt uh, the power hierarchical patriarchal structure in our economic profession and to I mean, try to have some advantage and of uh, women and diverse individual in ethical roles uh, in economics, we have to challenge this idea, these assumptions that excellence is gender neutral. So, Taking the point that is challenging this assumption about uh, gender neutral excellence, I will uh, try to do, I mean, I will try to uh, make this focus looking at three different areas, three, di three different um, analysis. So first of all, I want to see if different definitions of excellence uh, have a different impact for women and men. So if there are some definitions of excellence that systematically advantage or not women in their visibility in these rankings of uh, top economists. The second step is if there are some gender bias in the returns of being considered 
uh, excellent. So be included in this list of top economists to breaking the glass ceiling in academia. So to uh, get a uh, promotion to a full professorship. And the third uh, part of, uh, of my analysis is about trends in the publication. So I want to see if there are some gender differences in the path to excellence. So actually, I want to see if uh, there is a uh, matter of conformism uh, to reach excellence, and if there are some gender differences looking at the evolution of the academic production of these top, considered top authors uh, in the last decades. So which are the data that I analyze? Once more, my, the data set that I use is REPAC. I use REPAC because it's one of the leaders uh, database in economics that so we have right now uh, 2.8 million of works. Uh, we have more than 55,000 uh, 55, authors coming from different countries. We have uh, almost uh, 101 uh, uh, affiliations, different countries of affiliations. There is also a, um, let's say, good uh, share and uh, representation of women in that data set because the 50% of the author listed in REPAC are. Uh, women and also REPAC since uh, 2006 uh, uh, tend to uh, also compute some uh, indicators and some uh, uh, metrics that uh, try to uh, let increase the visibility of women in economics. Which are the main characteristics of this data set uh, is that is based on an active participation principle. This means that each author's institutions of publisher uh, can provide information to the network. So it's uh, a completely out of feeding uh, um, data sets. Um, the main point, and that's uh, why I uh, did choose also this uh, uh, data set is that uh, uh, they compute also different measures uh, of excellence to uh, compose different uh, rankings. And so, I mean, uh, that was, I mean, uh, really nice for uh, my analysis because in that sense, I could see if there are some gender differences in the perceptions and in the definitions of uh, excellence uh, uh, or taking a, a gender perspective. Um, another, I mean, a nice point uh, for using Prepac is that uh, um, when all these rankings are uh, computed, all the publication used. So actually, uh, also some uh, weights that are used uh, for um, the calculation of the rankings, such as uh, uh, the impact factor are, um, are um, calculated to all the different types of publications, not just uh, uh, journal articles, but also book, um, uh, book chapters, working paper, and, uh, and so on. So actually, uh, which data I took, uh, I analyzed deeply uh, the authors that are uh, in the um, top 10% author list. So uh, the authors that are considered uh, top economists, uh, according to REPAC. I also, I mean, uh, find all the different uh, definitions and different uh, uh, data about uh, uh, the uh, ranking that I use for, and so I computed all the different dimensions and weights and the different positions of uh, each author in the different rankings, but we'll see in the minutes uh, what <laughs> this means. Uh, but also I uh, gather some information uh, uh, about the academic background and so the educational background, um, uh, the affiliations, but also the academic status, of course, and so being full professor, for example, or not, uh, from the CVs that I gather uh, from uh, uh, websites uh, and web pages, personal or institutional ones. So, as you can imagine, I mean, it was a huge uh, data mining and data analysis. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
uh, that I had to do because, I mean, we don't have all this information available just in one data set. I also use uh, I mean, the um, uh, link of 10% female economies, that is another ranking, and this is another list of top economies that is computed by RIPEC, but only among uh, women. So, which is the main and the first step that I try uh, to solve? So, the main question is if excellent gender neutral. So, uh, there are uh, some different definitions of excellence that uh, I mean uh, used to penalize or used to advantage women in the positioning in this ranking. So, I just have to I mean uh, make clear how. Uh, the top, the ranking of top 10 percent voters in RIPEC is uh, defined. Actually, it is a, a result of uh, 36 different uh, rankings. Um, so actually, I mean, over here, you can have a uh, overview of the different uh, dimensions that uh, and the different uh, um, measures that uh, uh, and rankings that are used. As you can see, I mean, there are different dimensions that uh, are defined. Uh, there are some rankings that are based just on the number of publication on the number of pages in journal articles. Uh, there are, I mean, uh, some other that are based just on citation and citation counts. Uh, they are based also on popularity. So we have the number of downloads or the number of asked views, but also, I mean, some criteria based on uh, the centrality network. So we have these measures of closeness and betweenness in networks. Uh, all these different rankings uh, are also uh, weights for different weights uh, for, I mean, uh, for example, uh, the impact of citations, but also uh, for the number of co-authors. So, so actually uh, the uh, ranking of the top 10% authors, so the, the main one, the one that uh, is commonly used uh, also for uh, uh, evaluation processes and uh, to get tenures in some universities, uh, is the uh, average rank of uh, 36 uh, rank uh, of each author. So, uh, so my uh, um, main point and what I also, I mean, could observe is that the same individuals, according to the different definition, the different rankings that are used, has completely different positions in that ranking. So there is a high variability in the ranking positions according to the different definitions of excellence that we use. So I ask myself how different ranking can evaluate this few, I mean, the 2015 uh, women economists that are listed in the aggregated top 10% order list. So, so to uh, compare these differences, I use a non-parametric test that is called the Winkles rank uh, sum test so that uh, give us uh, the probability that uh, in that case, for example, men authors are uh, ranked higher than women on average in a specific ranking. Um, of course, I mean, I had to adjust a little bit uh, um, the definitions because I had to, revert, to compute the reverse of the ranking positioning to have this interpretation of the data. Uh, so in that sense, I mean, the results of this uh, uh, non-parametric test so if uh, is higher than 50%, this means that on average, men, men tend to have in higher positions now yeah, in the ranks uh, with respect to, to women. So I computed this uh, Wilson test for all the 36 uh, um, uh, rankings that are available in uh, Repack. And uh, of course, I mean, in the paper, you can find all the tables with all the data, but here I want to highlight which are uh, the main uh, points and which are the main uh, findings. Actually, uh, looking at uh, so this non parametric test, I can say that, and you can say that uh, um, the criteria, there are, I mean, some criteria and some measures of excellence that tend to penalize most women and that are those that are based on the number of publication and in particular when only journal articles 
are uh, uh, defined and are uh, computed. So actually, um, this is in line again with, uh, uh, I mean, a lot of literature that analyzes differences uh, um, between men and women in the economic, prof uh, economic profession that, uh, I mean, uh, find some evidence of the lower uh, productivity in terms of number of uh, uh, of uh, journal articles of women instead of men. Of course, in that case, there are I mean different uh, um, explanations to that uh, uh, lower uh, productivity of uh, women. Of course, I mean, for example, Hangel in her analysis found out that uh, there are higher standards applied to women writing writing a uh, writing uh, academic peer review um, article and so i mean this means that uh, for women uh, the um, peer review process takes uh, longer and th so this means that uh, i mean uh, it takes a, a longer time to uh, write a paper to publish a paper in a journal for women and that reduce uh, her uh, productivity and uh, her number of uh, um, journals uh, uh, published uh, per period. But I mean, we also know that uh, there are some traditional gender norms uh, that place a higher burden of both uh, the care work within the household. And it's something that we have to consider always specifically in that days of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic and the lockdown that will increase I mean, these gender gaps in productivity. But let me stress also that uh, these uh, traditional gender norms that place also a higher burden on women of uh, the care services for the so-called academic uh, family. So meaning that also within uh, the uh, academia, within the department, um, non-research related services uh, are more on the shoulders of women, and sometimes I mean more on the youngest women. So actually, I mean, we have to consider also that there are these implications in um, uh, in place. But actually, I mean, what I want to stress here is, is that, I mean, definitions of excellence that tend to uh, uh, be based on the number of publications and number of journal articles tend to penalize women for the lower productivity. But also uh, criteria based on centrality in networks tend to penalize women. And so this is something that, I mean, it's not surprising because we know that there are differences in the network uh, structures of uh, uh, economists uh, uh, for women and men. So looking at the gender um, and the gender perspective uh, and I mean, maybe some other research in that direction would be uh, how would help, I mean, to explain which are the main drivers of uh, this network centrality that is lower for women. But also what I want to stress here is that instead, if we um, use a criteria be based on citation, women are advantaged. So on average, women are uh, holding a higher position in the ranking that use citations for the definitions of merit and the definitions of excellence. And this is in line with, I mean, some new uh, research, uh, like, for example, the paper from Hengel, from Cart, but also Rosman, that identify and that prove that there is uh, a higher number of citations per articles when the authors are uh, women. So, beginning. Uh, in mind, I mean, that these uh, differences in uh, the uh, mm, uh, definitions of, uh, of excellence and how it has a different impact, uh, both on men and women. Uh, uh, my second step is to see if uh, there are some uh, gender bias and some gender differences in the return to excellence. So in the return of being included in that rankings or being ranked in a higher position in that rankings. So actually what it is, I extrapolated in 
homogeneous group uh, of women and men within, I mean, the list of the top 10% economists uh, that could have, let's say, the same academic age uh, could control a little bit uh, for experience. So uh, the main gender differences are evident also looking at just uh, a few statistics and uh, uh, descriptives, uh, uh, simple one, I mean, without uh, any uh, complicated um, econometric model. So actually the 80.5% of men uh, in uh, where full professors were, while uh, among uh, the women, the 60.3% uh, were full professors, so a lower share. Um, once more, I integrated all uh, the information in Retech about the authors with their um, uh, personal web pages uh, or institutional web pages to find their uh, academic status. Um, among uh, those who succeed in uh, breaking the glass ceiling, so among the full professors, uh, the 70% of women hold a PhD in a global uh, top university, while I mean, uh, the share for men that holds uh, a PhD in top global university is 48.5%. Uh, so uh, women have to invest more in their education to reach uh, higher position, but I mean, it could be the case also to see that a um, narrow way of elite of women that could reach full professorship. So my first uh, uh, questions to ask for, uh, to answer in that case, in this second part of the paper here is which is the impact of being a woman reaching the full professorship also among top economy. So in the list of top 10% authors in REPEC. Of course, I control, uh, I did a, a, a problem regression. So in that case, I control for uh, affiliation, educational backgrounds, and also, of course, their position in the ranking of top 10% authors in REPEC. And here are the results. I mean, as you can see, uh, being a woman, even among the top 10% uh, author uh, list in REPEC, so the top economies reduce the probability of uh, gaining a full professorship of in percentual point. And this is uh, I mean, <laughs> always a negative, uh, significant impact, uh, uh, considering different dimensions. But what I want also to stress here, and this is, uh, I mean, a quite important to stress in a gender perspective, is that if we consider all the authors, so we can see that the performance in the uh, in the ranking in the respect of ten percent economist rank uh, uh, is not significant. So the black uh, circle over there. But if we interrupt uh, this uh, performance in respect. Uh, for the sex of the whole war, I mean, instead here we have significance and a positive sign, meaning that uh, they having a higher position in the rank of uh, um, top 10 percent uh, author list uh, has an impact just for women. So a higher bar for women also in that uh, uh, case, also for reaching the full professorship. So this. Uh, um, results to serve a little bit more uh, in-depth analysis uh, looking at the different dimension of excellence that we saw previously. So we have this opportunity to have different definitions of, uh, uh, of excellence based on different uh, of different criteria that could be, I mean, the number of publications, the citations, the visibility, and so on. So actually, I wanted to see uh, which are the returns uh, in terms of getting a full professorship for having a higher, um, uh, higher visibility and higher rank in the uh, different ranking computed according to the different definitions of uh, excellence. So actually uh, what I did is uh, to uh, run several problem regressions considering uh, 
uh, all the uh, 36 dimensions uh, uh, that uh, we saw before, and so maybe I mean looking at the difference between uh, the dimensions that of excellence that are based on citation and publications, and then I uh, consider it it separately. So I did it. I mean two different. Uh, uh, regressions for women and men for all these uh, dimensions. And of course, uh, here I uh, show you just uh, the results for uh, women, but I mean, in the text and in the article, you can find uh, these tables, uh, these huge tables for men and for women and compare. But what I want to stress here is that, uh, I mean, if we consider the different dimensions, we can see that. Uh, uh, women and men are uh, evaluated in different ways. So the first uh, important point that we can uh, see looking at uh, these differences uh, in uh, the uh, probability of uh, getting full professorship is that the educational background, so having granted a PhD in a top global universities has a significant effect in, in positive effect on getting a full professorship and so uh, breaking the glass ceiling just uh, uh, for women and not for men. Another point is that even if we consider different dimensions of excellence uh, for the 36 different dimensions, uh, once more, I can confirm that the performance in the rank of uh, um, top 10% author list is relevant and it's significant and has a positive impact just for women and not for men. So actually in a higher bar for evaluation of women. But what I want to stress here is that women and men are evaluated differently. So actually the better performance in the measures of excellence based on publication are the main driver for success in academia for men, for women, sorry, while for men are those based on citations. So actually, if we uh, remember uh, the previous conclusions uh, where I mean, we find out that women are better evaluated and so I have a higher visibility when uh, measures of citations are considered we can, I mean, interpret this data as the main evidence of uh, the so-called Matilde, uh, Matilda um, effect. So of better to, I mean, uh, the, uh, the fact of devaluating the, um, uh, the strengths and uh, the, um, uh, and the main uh, part and the main uh, characteristic that were uh, women excel in uh, science. So actually uh, we can conclude looking at uh, these uh, regressions and this uh, uh, analysis that women tend to receive less recognitions than men in terms of the promotions based on the criteria of excellence in which they excel. So uh, the evaluations of uh, uh, the um, of, of women and their strength and their characteristics. The third part of the paper, and, uh, and then, then I conclude with that, uh, is to see and to investigate the evolutions in the publication styles uh, uh, two of these uh, top uh, uh, economies looking at, uh, I mean, gender differences in trends. So actually, I want to see, I wanted to test if uh, uh, women to enter in this club of uh, top uh, economies had to uh, conform to other uh, to a um, standard, a mainstream standard of excellence at uh, a different uh, speed of their male top uh, uh, economist uh, colleagues or to other lower rank women economists. So in that sense, I integrated the um, authors that I considered, I mean, the one that are listed in the top 10% author list in Repat with the profile of uh, 752 women that are instead rank in the female economy's top 10% authors in Repack. So the ranking of uh, 
let's say, more sighted, more um, visible uh, women in REPEC. So this, this uh, ranking is computed just among uh, uh, women. I want here to I mean, show you uh, some main differences in the characteristic and most of all in the affiliations. What we can uh, find here is uh, are the characteristics of men that are in the top 10% photo list, the women in the top 10% list, and those women that are not in top 10% list, but uh, still are highly ranked in uh, uh, RAPAC. Uh, actually, I mean, uh, this is, uh, I did ask one because uh, actually I really think that uh, we should have an integrate always a uh, intersectional analysis uh, uh, looking at differences. And when, I mean, we consider gender, we shouldn't have uh, a binary dimensions looking at just the women and men, but I mean, we have to integrate some other <laughs> differences. And in that case, I would just wanted to uh, introduce, I mean, some differences among women, because I mean, we all know that, uh, I mean, uh, different women face different barriers. And so actually, I mean, due to the data and disaggregation, I couldn't have a broader approach to the intersection. I try to see also which is the diversity among women. Uh, what I want to stress here is that, uh, and uh, here is evident, that we have uh, some sign of the leaky pipeline in the uh, economic acad uh, academic uh, careers. So, so actually, uh, we can see that uh, the 27.9%, almost 28% of the women that are not uh, in the top 10 authors list uh, are economists that work outside the, the academia. So actually, they're working for international organizations, for NGOs, but outside the academia. Uh, uh, what I want to stress here also is that the huge difference is also among men and different uh, kind of women economists uh, about the affiliation. So while uh, for women in top 10% total list, uh, we have a huge concentration in the U.S. Uh, affiliation U.S. University, the 66.5%. Instead, I mean, uh, for women not in top 10%, we have uh, different affiliations. We have some uh, affiliations uh, that are uh, from Europe, for example, UK, Germany, Italy, France. Of course, I mean, still, I have to stress that no global south is uh, in that list. I also try to define and to look at uh, uh, differences in their uh, production. So looking at the number of publications, their visibility, but also the content of uh, their uh, publications. So what we can see here, and I saw the trends uh, in publications from the 80s to nowadays, uh, uh, some differences uh, among the men, uh, top women and top men economists, but also uh, considering uh, women not in top uh, 10. What we can see here is that, I mean, still, we have to see that uh, women, and there is a gender gap, and women tend to uh, produce uh, less than paper, less number of uh, journal articles uh, per period uh, than men, even if, I mean, th there has been a huge increase since the 1992, and, and when, I mean, some measures of uh, evaluation uh, on bibliometric has been introduced. Uh, looking at the visibility inside, these are trends uh, for the mean number of citations per year. So what we can see here is once more, I mean, women in top 10% authors ranking, I mean, outperform men in the number of citations. So actually there is this uh, huge overperformance in uh, citations uh, that uh, they receive, but still, I mean, also for all the other women, there is a huge increase in the number of citations. So I uh, could also find evidence of what Hangul, Cart and uh, Grossman found uh, for looking at different kinds of uh, um, economies and gender gaps in citations. Looking at instead the content of uh, these publications, I try also to uh, figure out some 
different trends. So actually I use the shell code not saying what uh, are the main field of research of uh, single authors, because actually uh, we are some kind of critical uh, for the adoptions of a gel code in that case. And we wrote also with Christian Mascuzzo a paper about uh, that uh, uh, critics of uh, the gel codes and the use of gel codes. But actually, I mean, I use them to see if there are some trend in the level of specialization. So actually what I uh, the fine is a measures is a index of concentration, the HHT index, um, to see uh, if there is an increase in uh, the specialization or decrease in time. So actually, uh, this index range from zero to to one. A higher um, value of this index means that there is a higher concentration. So in other specialization specialization in this case uh, for the economies. So looking at trends, I mean, what do I want to stress here is that, I mean, the trends is for, I mean, all these three different, uh, let's say group of economies are the same. And there is a, uh, let's say, de um, uh, decrease in a specialization that could be, and this could be uh, drove, uh, driven by uh, the fact that there is an increase also in the number of publications. So actually, uh, all economists are going to uh, write more and write on different fields. And this is, I mean, once more, I want to stress a common trend. I also try, I mean, to have a broad idea of the diversity of idea and so how this, uh, how was the evolution uh, in, uh, in that, looking at uh, for each period, if a single author um, uh, publish a, a paper or a, a journal article that can be uh, classified as a paradox. So for the definition of a paradox uh, publication, I use the same definition that we use with, uh, um, with Marcella Corsi and Carlo Di Polti in a uh, 2018 uh, uh, article publishing group. So using compilation of gel code, but also I mean, using the uh, journal where the publication has been published uh, according to uh, the Lee list of a paradox journals. So what I want to stress here is that the level of uh, uh, diversity of idea is really low. There are not huge differences among uh, women, men, and this is an alarming uh, trend that I mean we should I mean, uh, see and consider for the diversity in our profession. So actually, while for uh, the backgrounds and, uh, and in the number of publications and the number of citations, we can see huge differences. When we uh, look at the content of uh, the research, I mean, there is an alarming uh, uh, convergence path for all economics and for all economists. So I'll draw some conclusions so that, I mean, I can leave the floor also to, I mean, a more uh, broader um, discussions that, I mean, one I want to stress here is that uh, there are, I mean, differences and all different measures of excellence of research are not gender neutral. And if we replicate uh, that in ranking of individuals, I mean, this is contributes to the limit of the success of women and diverse uh, person, individuals and researchers in the field. Actually, I found uh, um, evidence that women tend to be penalized in the ranking and the possibility of uh, top authors list for the lower productivity in terms of number of articles published. And this is something that we have to consider for this period and the after COVID-19 and after pandemic restrictions. Since uh, I think, and we have all the alarming uh, Um, evidence is that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, gender gaps in productivity will increase in the next uh, years. Um, so uh, 
also we have to have the retail in academia a systematic underestimations and minimalizations of women's qualifications. Uh, that is reproducing the fact that uh, is the criteria where the Excel received lower recognitions in terms of uh, breaking the glass ceilings and uh, getting promotions to full professorship. Of course, I mean, when we speak about the support for women's career in economic professors, they are not easy solutions, but I mean, what do I want to stress and uh, what is the main message of uh, the article is that, I mean, we should not focus on how the single individual, the single woman, woman uh, can overcome the barrier that can have in her uh, career path. But I mean, we should rethink critically uh, what uh, a merit is what excellence is and actually this is the only way in which i mean we can try to dismiss uh, the status quo and dismiss i mean this patriarchal hierarchical power structure that we have in our uh, profession so actually i mean i will leave this for i mean the next uh, um, conversations and if there are some questions but i mean i want to thank you uh, for the attention. This is uh, the paper that you can uh, download uh, directly from uh, the website. And uh, I just want to also to show you these nice pictures by uh, Jackie Fleming, uh, The Trouble with Women. That, I mean, also, I mean, looking at the contributions of women in the past could be a source of uh, uh, giving more visibility uh, to women in our I mean, advancing these directions. Um, okay. Were you going to show? We'll close the presentation. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, sorry, I just interrupted my, the sharing of the screen and so I can leave the, the floor to Rebecca. Perfect, thank you very much, um, Julia. Uh, very informative. Um, I will put a link uh, directly to, to the article in the chat room. Um, now I call on Rebecca gomez Betancourt to give us some comments on the paper. Can I share my screen? Please. Okay. One okay, can you hear me? Yes, can you see? Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Louis Philippe, and, uh, and particularly thank you, Julia, uh, for contacting me uh, to, to, to make some comments today. Uh, the first thing that I want to say is that I really enjoyed to read this paper. I read uh, carefully, and I have a lot of uh, notes and comments uh, that I will send you also by email. I think I need uh, a little bit more time to, to think about it. Um, but this this is uh, very this is a very important piece, a uh, very important article, because it's very rich. Uh, actually, um, Julia include a lot of literature, very recent articles. Uh, she really um, she quotes. So I think all the the um, the publication uh, among the articles by you know. 2020, early 2021. So uh, really, I think it's part of the current discussion, but also, so she she works with all these data uh, from Rebec. So I think it's a, it's a very um, complete, complete article. So um, 
what we are discussing here, so uh, she clearly said that women, women are substantially underrepresented in the field of economics, that there are few women economists in top positions, there are some barriers and biases in publishing, in promotion and tenure. And there is this big focus on excellence, uh, a lack of diversity. And uh, she said something that for me was very important. Uh, she said in two part of the article, she said we need to avoid uh, this false gender binary only to compare men and women, because I mean, there are also uh, intersectional uh, comparisons that are very important here. And there are many differences uh, among women themselves. So um, how not to continue promoting a mainstream definition of excellence uh, that is gender discriminatory and that is socially constructed. So, um, so in the second part of the article, she, she present, she starts presenting the, the results, the contribution of the, of the paper. Uh, she, she shows that uh, rankings uh, disadvantage women uh, when they are based mainly on the number of publication. So there are less disadvantage when they are based on quotation. So when you count the number, and this is something that we can apply for not only in, in universities, but also in, in other institutions uh, among economists, when you count the number of publication, you see a, a big, big disadvantage uh, against women. Uh, she also shows that female author papers spend three to six months longer uh, in peer review compared to the equivalent male author papers. And this is something that if we know, if we have some proofs, then we can talk with editors and try to change this. Why this takes so, so, long, so long for uh, review um, women economist papers. Third, um, then this is also true. We show uh, she Julia show uh, this with her data. We, women uh, compared to men spend too much time rewriting old papers more than writing new papers. And then women tend to publish with fewer co-authors. So then uh, our network is uh, reduced in compared to their uh, male colleagues. Um, in relation with her third um, section of the article, the other results, um, this is also very interesting. So she wrote that even for the elite, so these are women economists that are in the top uh, uh, universities in the United States, and also for the top 10% women econ economists in REPEC, uh, the 80 85.5% of men are employed as full, full professors, while women only 60%. Okay, and this is among the elite and among the 10% women economists. So it's true, uh, if you are a woman, it's better to study in the United States to increase the probability of reaching the top of the academic careers. And uh, Julia also shows in her article that women and men are evaluated differently. So uh, women are evaluated uh, through the number of publication, uh, whereas the men are, are more evaluated on the quotations, on the number of the quotations. So this is something that is, uh, you know, uh, really bad for uh, women e evaluations. Uh, then she uh, do these uh, separations about and to compare and to go really deeper and see what about the production, what about the visibility. And she shows that produce, about the production is true. Uh, there is an increase in the number of publications. So women are playing the game, are publishing a lot, um, but the gender gap is uh, very huge and these remain stable. Uh, men tend to publish more journal articles that, than women. Then there is this visibility. Uh, women uh, increase their visibility in terms of citations. And then there is this uh, discussion that for me is the central point of the article. Uh, and for me, this article will be read also for, 
scholars working on education, working on administration, public administration, about rankings and about uh, neutrality of excellence. So the assumption about neutrality of excellence and its measurability in terms of ranking of individuals per se is gender biased and it contributes to limit the success of women in the field. So we need to recognize this, that, you know, these uh, suppose, so these, you know, these, I think many of the people that are, that are working on rankings, they want to uh, produce uh, ranking, ranking that are neutral, but these typical, these rankings are not neutral at all. They are gender biased. And in this sense, these rankings have a transformative power. So if we know the power of this ranking, the power of these measures, we need to, we need to change them. We, and this is a quotation that Julia included in her paper. Uh, these rankings are now, until now, reinforcing a power-related male-dominated apparatus in the economics professions. So why? to discuss about this is so important because I am sure that all the people that are, are connected now with us, uh, you are super convinced of this, but why? Uh, because there, there is a lot of result, a lot of quotation, a lot of data. So I think we can really believe on what uh, Julia uh, wrote in her article. So what we can do once we have these results, it, this is important because through this, we, if we change this um, uh, disparity, we can, this allow us to meet new authors, new works, new topics, new methods. If we change these uh, 10 uh, top economies, do we want to render visible the work of more women economies? Uh, we want to be influenced by other academic and professional backgrounds, uh, other kind of economies. Uh, we need more pluralism in economics. I'm asking this question because I think if once we have the result of the data, then we need to know uh, why we need to change the ranking. What are the aims uh, that we have here? Also, uh, I was wondering, so these are questions for, for Julia. Also, I was wondering if uh, there are gender difference among subfields in economics, because I read an article that shows that, you know, in macroeconomics, for example, uh, the gender uh, difference is very huge, is, is, is bigger than in microeconomics. Uh, is there less difference in applied economics or in particular in field works? Um, and then a third uh, kind of uh, question that I have reading your article was about this ROPEC active participation principle, because uh, uh, I like very much ROPEC and I think it's, uh, it's a very complete and very, you know, um, very plural <laughs> kind of uh, database. And uh, they did a big campaign to have more information about women, uh, women economists. But I also think uh, that the visibility uh, depends also on our academic institutions, on our universities, on our research centers, on our societies, um, uh, and maybe in, in the grants, et cetera. So I, I want to know um, uh, your, I want to, to know a little bit your opinion about, about this, about the, what do you think about this active participation principle? Because maybe men when they they feel in the repack they will do more you know more actively than women uh but i also i also know that repack did this big campaign uh, uh among women women economists so what do you think um we need to do now do we need to create uh new rankings and this is a question that we uh currently we have in france because in france recently like uh uh Two months ago, uh, the CNRS, uh, the Scientific National Research, um, said that they don't want to uh, continue using the ranking of the journals, uh, the scientific journals in economics that we use until now. 
do we use now the impact factor like in other countries? Uh, you know, you say that you uh, most of your research is, of course, uh, about these top 10 uh, economies that are based in the United States. So uh, the global south or other countries like Italy, like France or Latin America, for example, are not are not really representing this. And in a moment of your article, you say, you know, there are more underrepresentation of women in the most powerful, influential places. It's like, it's crazy, it's paradoxical. It's, there are more um, underrepresentation sometimes in very developed countries and maybe in less developed countries because there are other rankings, another way to uh, have positions. You know, I, I'm not saying that it's perfect, but uh, the, the way to recruit is different. So, you know, do we need to create new rankings? Uh, do we need to ask women economists that are at power, that are part of these 10, uh, top 10, to participate, to participate, to be engaged with us in this agenda, like to, to have more uh, complex, uh, larger uh, rankings, not only based on number of articles, more on quotations of other intersectional, as you say, uh, index. Do we need um, you know, to work a new generation of young economists uh, that need to be really educated with this perspective on the importance of diversity, on the importance of gender equality. Um, you know, talk about this at, at the university saying that, you know, the, the top 10 economies that we know that are only men is because there are these problems with rankings and with recruitment and etc. Do we need more uh, women in some subfield? For example, more dissertations by women economists in macroeconomics. So do we need like uh, um, invest in macroeconomics and say, well, if I need to be supervisor of a dissertation, maybe it's better, uh, and it's a, it's a woman scholar, maybe it's better to give her uh, macroeconomics topics. Do we need to act like, act like this? Uh, do we need uh, more support by some uh, economists at top level, for example, Nobel Prize. And I'm, I'm, I wrote this because in one of the interviews that, uh, that we did to um, uh, one of the editor of Feminist Economists, uh, she said that she contacted Amartya Sen to be part of the editorial committee of Feminist Economics uh, Journal, because you know, if you have Amartya Sen, if you have, I don't know, Stiglitz, if you have, so do, do we need to go and really, you know, knock the door of uh, Krugman, Stiglitz, Roderick, or I don't know, or maybe other more uh, orthodox and say, please, we need more to include other, other methods and other topics. Do we need more fellowships, more postdocs, more grant for women and diverse scholars? So some solutions, uh, I'm, I'm almost finished. Um, we need to fight more against gender discrimination and avoid to reproduce this institutional equilibrium, this institutional status quo, a pattern that is established from the beginning of the professionalization of economics uh, that can be modified through some equity policies. So you, you put a very nice quotation by Song Hin. Uh, in practice, merit-based outcome allocations might be enacted in a manner that reinforces the status quo and favors dominant groups because the latter tend to control the evaluation process. So if they are the male that control the evaluation process, then they will reproduce uh, the same uh, merit-based uh, allocation. Given, power, given that power in academia, and in particular in economics, have historical been predominantly male. Patriarchy is a Latin social hierarchy that can be embedded with the evaluation of existing standard of excellence. We need to evaluate, we need to include other skills, and this also I took from your article, sorry, but this is Sakya 2021, other skills, including teaching, professional activities, international projects coordination, social engagement. We need to include not only the number of publications, the number of quotations, but collective projects, teaching, the link between teaching and publication, for example. Uh, what do you think about, you know, that they apply turn in social science, in economics, you know, that there are 
more and more applied uh, uh, works in economics, for example, a sterile flow and all of this. Uh, do you think that this is opening opportunities to women economists uh, since their traditional specialists, uh, uh, specialists are more applied oriented? And even if there still have a large gap in publication between men and women in favor of men, women outperform men in many topics in economics. So, you know, you, you say that there are not um, a lot of diversity in publications, but uh, you quote one of the articles that say in demography, there are a lot of women in poverty, in education, in gender and economics, uh, of course. Nevertheless, women economists remain substantially underrepresented. So. I, I completely agree with you, but I think that this recognition, this recognition the, is important to increase decision-making, participation, and power of women economists in society. So it's not only a question of being full professor, what is very important, but it's also a question of, you know, opportunities. We need to make this effort to improve the visibility, the opportunity for women economists, uh, it needs to be made. But, well, thank you very much, grazie, <laughs> for, this, uh, for this very rich article. And as you see, I have a lot of questions and many things to discuss with you and with the others. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Man, a lot of interesting uh, uh, questions and I will try to answer them I mean, and I also give the floor, I mean, for discussions if some other that want to uh, open up the floor. But actually, I mean, uh, uh, let me say, first of all, that uh, I really think that uh, the point of excellence uh, that is uh, gender bias. And so actually, the main point is, uh, I mean, to reverse <laughs> this uh, practice of rankings. And of rankings that uh, are based just on uh, uh, publications, on citations, uh, uh, there are this motto in uh, our uh, professions that it was uh, uh, published or perish or uh, still, uh, uh, let's say, uh, be more visible in terms of citations. And so it's something that uh, we're trying to perceive just, I mean, to survive in our profession, but actually it has uh, deep consequences in the evolutions of uh, the pluralism in other professions. And uh, I mean, this is a matter of uh, how we want to conceive uh, uh, the economics professions uh, within the social sciences. So actually uh, I have to say that I, I mean, I use, uh, I mean, the quantitative and applied economics, but uh, uh, just to prove, I mean, that the data uh, are uh, something that should be used uh, to validate some uh, uh, nice questions and some uh, methods or some uh, uh, more uh, deep questions. But uh, I would, for example, I mean, I would uh, be uh, much more happy to see more women uh, in history of economic thoughts and uh, a new evolution of history of economic thought that, for example, in Italy, in Italian university, and this is the case also of my university, is completely disappearing uh, as a field of research in economics. So actually, uh, there are some important questions that uh, we have to pose uh, also for the evaluation of uh, economics as a discipline and which is uh, uh, the main importance of uh, this discipline for the society. That is something that uh, is somehow disappearing from uh, from the main uh, perspective uh, using, I mean, all these uh, methodological, mathematical approaches and so on. Um, so actually, I mean, uh, uh, Saying that, uh, I, I want to stress that uh, I think that uh, we can rethink uh, the uh, evaluation process. And I think that, I mean, one of the main problem is, of course, I mean, uh, the presence of ranking, but how ranking are used? Because, I mean, if we have rankings of single individuals that are used for the promotions, for the, um, for the tenures, uh, practices, uh, and uh, the survival of uh, younger uh, 
researchers or also men uh, for reaching a higher positions in the, uh, in the universities. I mean, actually, uh, we have these, uh, um, how do you say it? I mean, uh, this uh, power of ranking that uh, tend to reproduce uh, the main and the status quo of the professions that we all know is uh, a male dominated uh, white uh, and uh, Anglo, US Anglo centric um, profession. Um, so my main proposal, I mean, here so, and I think that it's really linked with how we use also this metrics is that, I mean, we also have to rethink the way of evaluating the merit and the excellence of uh, each researchers and each economist. And this should be done on the basis of uh, diversity. So meaning that, I mean, for example, I mean, and this is something that we also dis uh, discuss uh, a little bit with, I mean, of course, Carlo Di Politi, Marcella Forsi, but also Ursula Costantini, um, is that, I mean, we should have this diversity grounded evaluations. Uh, so we should uh, have also more responsible research evaluations. Uh, that's why I wanted to stress, I mean, uh, looking at the top, and I mean, you are right, I mean, this, uh, this piece and this article is just about, uh, I mean, a little specific, uh, a narrow uh, number of top economists. But still, I wanted to see if there were gender differences also for that, for those. And uh, I mean, also for reaching the top of the professions. And so that's why I use just the full professorship. But of course, I mean, uh, we all know that uh, there are huge problems also for entry. And this is, I mean, uh, uh, for also for younger. So, I mean, I completely agree. So actually, if uh, there are some more responsible research evaluations, uh, there could be, I mean, some source of, uh, let's say, uh, dynamics that could uh, in some sense, reverse uh, this uh, um, status quo of uh, uh, the power relations inside the um, inside uh, the academic uh, inside the economic professions. How we can do it? Of course, I mean we can speak about that. I mean for uh, a long for hours, uh, we can find I mean some points uh, you encountered and some other not. But I really think, and this is something that uh, I stress also in the paper, that I mean we should evaluate uh, the, the research not only on publications, but as you I mean also stress. So on all the other activities that are ranked. So teaching, we have these wonderful missions uh, as academians, that is the third missions of the university. So we have to be connected with the society. We have to bring our contributions also for the evolutions of the society that is around us. I mean, we are not in uh, just in this ivory tire, uh, tower. So actually, we should have also evaluated for what we give also uh, for the other, for uh, the community that is uh, really near of our university, really connected with our territory, but also what we do for the corporations if we interact with other realities, I mean, it's something that we are not evaluated on <laughs> to enter and to succeed in that, in our academic careers. And I mean, maybe this also the, the reason why, I mean, a lot of women are now going outside the academia, because I mean, somehow it's easier to get recognitions outside the academia than, uh, because, I mean, we do a lot of these activities also that we are not evaluated to. Uh, but what I also want to stress here is that, I mean, we should have also some, uh, um, I mean, some, we, we should create also some committees. And this is something that I'm happy that also Annalisa Rosal is here because actually, and also Marcella Porsi, because actually it's something that has been done also uh, for uh, the Italian Economic Society to have a committee 
for uh, monitoring the level of uh, diversity and uh, of course, I mean, looking at the binary sometimes only and so not looking hopefully just for women, but also, I mean, the thing which is the status and which is the evolution of the diversity in each country. Because I mean, actually, and this is the motto that I always quote from the EGD, uh, European Institute for Gender Equality, uh, we can, uh, I mean, see things only when they are measured. And so we can better only if we have evidence of that. So if we know that there are some problems, and this is something really important also to monitor the difference in the subfield of economics. So actually, that's why, I mean, if you go also in uh, uh, the commissions for um, uh, gender and gender equality of uh, the Italian associations of economists, you can find them I in also the different uh, um, uh, share of women among them I in different status so among researchers, uh, associate professor or full professors in the different subfields uh, of economics. Because I mean, actually, I mean, this is something that if we can find, if we can monitor, and that's why it's important to have a constant monitoring of the situations, we can try to do something and to improve and to propose something else that, I mean, there are some, I mean, some funding, uh, uh, some, um, uh, some evaluation processes that are for sure biased in the direction that, I mean, not only uh, tend to diminish the, uh, the relevance of women, but also of other subfields uh, of uh, economics that are not so visible to these biometric uh, biometric indices. And um, uh, what about uh, so uh, the REPAC? Uh, uh, so one of the questions was, uh, what do you think about the REPAC active participation principle? Uh, yes, I mean, this is a, was uh, one also of the consideration that I received when I was writing the paper is that, of course, I mean, um, the fact that we have fewer women also in REPAC, it could be the fact that women tend to uh, be to um, self-promote themselves less than men. So actually, it could be the case that we have a lower share of women uh, because, I mean, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, they are not uh, involved in these self-promotions activities, so they don't put, and they don't uh, uh, put the last articles in repack and so on. But of course, I mean, it's a matter also of uh, power of the institutions, because actually, if you work uh, for I mean, a huge department when you have uh, a uh, just a office that uh, run just the visibility for research and do these things for you, of course, I mean, you are there and you are visible. So uh, this is, a, of course, a part of the story. And so actually, and most of all, is a part of the story of the youngest. Uh, let me say that, I mean, and this is, I think that we agree on, I mean, another main point is the mentorship. I mean, and this is crucial for younger. And that's why, I mean, uh, there are a lot of associations and we have to have this lot of association because actually we have to uh, be together, find some uh, mentors. I do not think that uh, the Nobel Prize could uh, uh, help in that direction because sometimes uh, their perspective are limited and so they are not so inclusive <laughs> by definition. But uh, by the way, I think I really think that we have to have some. Uh, uh, I mean, some associations where we have to put together, and I mean, you will have to find um, a feeling and a way to uh, have a mentorships also for the people and for the women and the uh, people of the field that succeed. And this is of crucial importance. And this is what we are trying also to do for uh, the inside the YAFKI, so the International Association for Feminist Economics uh, all together. I don't know if there are, I mean, some other people that uh, yeah. maybe, I mean, Rebecca, you have a lot of questions. So I, I think that we can discuss a little. 
hugely for hours uh, and we can take, I don't know, uh, an, another day. <laughs> Thank you to both. Um, uh, so let's go some, to some questions. I'm gonna, st I do have one question that I want to ask. If you do have a question, please raise your hand. I think you find it, uh, you, if you know how to raise your hand on here, you, there you go. Um, so Annalisa, one question first, and then I'll go to you. Um, my question is very, um, uh, uh, so this is the question. What advice, and in asking this question, I would very much invite you to uh, submit a paper on this question because I think it's important uh, and I would be very, very happy to publish it. What advice, what specific advice do you give journal editors? I mean, what, what can I do uh, in the evaluation of, uh, of papers? Now, I'm, I'm gonna put my cards on the table. I looked at the data and Rope gets about 325 papers a year. About 75 of them are from women. Okay, so there's this deficit that we somehow have to work on. Um, and if you have advice on that issue, uh, please do. But in general, what advice would you give journal editors? And I think that would be uh, a very good and informative paper blue for all, you know, journals, uh, heterodox journals uh, to, uh, uh, to have. Uh, thank you. That's my question. Uh, if you want to answer that, then we'll go to Annalisa, then we'll go to Elon. Yes, actually, I, I have not <laughs> a complete answer to that, but I really think that uh, uh, what it could uh, I mean, uh, also um, be useful is to have and to recognize the, which are the share of women authors and how long does it take the uh, peer review process uh, uh, for women authors and for men authors. I think that, I mean, you have the data to uh, define if there are some uh, differences. And uh, um, actually what also can be done is to have um, for the reviewer, a, let's say a balanced share of women and men, but not all in terms of, of course of gender binary between men and women, but also, I mean, this is, I mean, something that uh, doesn't apply, of course, uh, to rope because it's an heterodox uh, journal, but I mean, to have different, uh, different uh, uh, referees that, uh, and reviewers uh, that are coming from different backgrounds. So from different university, from different geographic areas and from different fields of research. I think that this could be, I mean, a, a good, I mean, and simple things to do. I mean, to uh, try to give and try to find out a list of uh, reviewers that are uh, diverse in that sense. And uh, I mean, of course, to see if and to monitor if uh, things change, uh, thinking of uh, that. And other things, I mean, uh, could it be, I mean, to have uh, a double, um, let's say, speed of uh, uh, of uh, for the uh, for the peer review process, and this is, I mean, something that uh, could apply mostly for uh, younger <laughs> generations, uh, because I mean, we all know that. Uh, for, uh, for example, I mean, for hiring or for tenure decisions, uh, some publications and the number of publications is crucial to get tenures. And so actually uh, to have a fast track uh, for uh, younger or for uh, diverse, and so for people coming from uh, the global south or for not mainstream uh, affiliations could be um, an other bounds. Thank you, Rebecca, to that. Now, just, just so you know, uh, I've restructured the journal. I made the editorial board and advisory board gender balance. Uh, and that gives me a pool of reviewers uh, to tap. And so, and look, mia culpa, mia culpa, mia culpa. I, as a white man, I have a lot to learn. 
and I've got in trouble, as I'm sure you've seen on Twitter. And so it's a learning process for me, uh, but I do want to learn. And the funny enough is, shamefully, the instinct is often to go to white men. You know, it, maybe I'm exaggerating, uh, but it, that we, we all have to, to, to learn, especially us older people. So Rebecca, if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I think you, you are doing very good with your uh, diverse uh, editorial committee and, you know, for example, organizing the seminar for today, you are, you know, making uh, some publicity of uh, Julia's article. So this is something that um, the editor of the Journal of the History of Economic Thought, they are doing too. So they are doing short videos to um, the old, where in which the authors, they present their article, the contribution, the result of the articles, then, you know, people are invited to read the articles. I think um, it's also important to ensure, uh, to be sure that in each number, you uh, each uh, journal, you have uh, articles by woman, woman or by, somebody from this global south or from PhD students. So I, I, I completely agree with uh, Julia. So to re reduce the time for reports, um, to, you know, to uh, send uh, like some message, like please resend the, re resubmit the articles because it's true that in general, women or young scholars take a lot of time to resubmit. Sometimes they hesitate. So say, recent, resubmit your article. Um, so, but no, I think you, you are starting very good because you are, you know, making visible, uh, you know, articles by women, by young scholars, by heterodox in general. So I think it's, you know, we are all thinking about this. So we are all, all working and looking for solutions all together. So we keep in touch and I will tell you with no. So yeah, please send me and I, I can get uh, other editors involved because I think this is something that as editors, we have this responsibility uh, to the community. Okay, so I'm gonna go with Annalisa. If you want to unmute uh, yourself, ask your question, please. Okay. Uh, well, uh, first, a suggestion to the editor of a journal, uh, since, uh, as Rebecca just said, uh, women are uh, more easily dis uh, disappointed and discouraged by uh, a, a, a referee report, which is not very positive, uh, uh, pay attention uh, the way in which uh, the revise and resubmit is a phrase because uh, if there are uh, negative comments, uh, women in general, I'm not saying always, uh, focus on them more than on the positive part. So if it is uh, the, the report really says revise and resubmit, if there are chances uh, that, that after a revision, the paper can be published, pay attention at the wording of the letter. Uh, this is just to go to add a suggestion to, to, to what um, you were saying. Uh, no, I have um, an observation. Uh, I uh, was impressed by what uh, um, Julia showed us in the slide that um, a lower percentage of the women in the top 10 of the ranking are full professor. So I see some inconsistencies here in the sense that uh, the main object of ranking and the way, uh, and, and the main object of ranking would be to avoid discrimination, to provide some sort of uh, objective measure. Uh, so we, uh, and it's very important what Julia does in her paper by showing that uh, this ranking is not gender neutral. But then uh, what you say is that this ranking doesn't matter very much 
since uh, women who according to the ranking are among the best are not full professor either. So the justification of the ranking itself here is uh, contradicted. So I was uh, puzzled by this and so I would say, well, all this fuss about ranking would be justified in terms of gender equality if we could prove that, uh, say, tenure, promotion to full professorship deeply on ranking. While unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know what to say here, there's not this connection according to what you say, Julia. Is my interpretation correct or... Uh, did I misunderstood you? Did I no, no, it's, it's exactly this one. I mean, and uh, I mean, uh, the main point is this one. I mean, uh, the, and what I try to also show is that, I mean, women did uh, a lot of efforts in increasing their visibility, in increasing their publications, uh, to be quoted and to, I mean, be uh, part of this uh, uh, top uh, uh, club of economists. But once, I mean, they have to be evaluated for uh, reaching the top also of the academic careers. I mean, these rules, I mean, uh, disappears. I mean, uh, they are evaluated badly just for i mean uh, the uh, the main uh, characteristics that uh, they don't have so actually they are evaluated just on the basis of the parameters where i mean uh, they lack more recognition so the number of publications so actually uh, this is the main point that i want to show is that i mean uh, there are a lot of uh, women that uh, maybe are forcing themselves to publish a lot, I mean, to uh, be in part of that. But, I mean, the rules are different for, I mean, from breaking the glass ceiling, the rules are different for men and women. So even if uh, you are part of this uh, uh, top economist, because, I mean, you follow the rules to get and to be there, and then, once you have to have returns uh, in terms of full professorship, in terms of uh, breaking the grass ceilings, the status quo remain the same. So men succeed because, I mean, uh, they're evaluated for uh, the uh, criteria where they excel, while, I mean, much of the fact uh, women are uh, uh, devaluated for uh, their performance. And this is exactly, I mean, uh, the point. So we can say that uh, by definition, there are differences in uh, how uh, merit and excellence is framed on a gender perspective. So we cannot say <laughs> that uh, excellence is one word that fits all at the same time. But we can see also that there are uh, the returns uh, of these friends for men and women. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll go to Elon, and then the last last question will be uh, from Karen. Elon, make it quick, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, three small questions. First of all, I am wondering if this situation, gender gap, is a derivative or a function of mainstream heterodox distinction. Uh, in that terms, I would like to ask, what is the share of uh, women among heterodox economics regarding citation and top uh, positions and then in mainstream? Because I assume that women are less likely happy with the mainstream narrative. This, uh, this is also the case for people uh, of color and so on, other minorities. Uh, second, uh, uh, regarding the citation, how should we handle with that? Should I uh, cite a uh, scholar before, uh, after uh, Googling his or her name, if he or she is a people of color or a woman and so on in order to increase the citation, uh, have, which is the important, the intent content of this uh, work or the name or his or her identity. And third, as in Germany, since some years, I, I'm not sure, but at least as I'm here in Germany uh, since 2014, 
there is a uh, in universities uh, they have to prefer the female candidate in case of both candidates are in same qual qualification. Do you know something about it? If it is has it worked in Germany to balance the this power, or this it has no effect. Thank you so much. Thank you for your quick questions. <laughs> Julia? Yes, actually, I mean, uh, I don't have this data about, I mean, uh, the difference between uh, heterodox and uh, orthodox or mainstreams and uh, which is the share of uh, women and men in that field. Uh, actually, what I show is that if we uh, recognize and if we use this list and this ranking of uh, top 10% uh, authors or most cited authors, I mean, the share of heterodox, uh, by definitions, I mean, looking at men and women, is really low, it's lower than 1%. So actually, uh, I uh, think that, of course, there are uh, differences in uh, the valuations, but uh, by definition, I mean, uh, in that list, uh, the heterodox uh, and the heterodox uh, uh, economies, uh, we can say are uh, disappearing or, I mean, there is a just a few publications that are considered uh, for this ranking. So actually is a matter of uh, what we consider excellent. And so that's why, I mean, it's important to include the diversity discourse in the merit and the excellence, because we have to include also, I mean, different dimensions and different uh, fields of research that uh, are disappearing in that, that sense from this ranking, if we use this mainstream measures and this mainstream uh, um, bibliometrics uh, uh, to uh, compose these indicators. So looking at citations, I mean, what I suggest is, I mean, uh, to not follow, I mean, it's always my suggestion is always to read. Uh, the paper that we cite. I mean, because there is a, some, uh, I mean, for uh, some reason, I mean, we take, there are some authors that tend to cite the people uh, that, uh, uh, I mean, could uh, uh, give them more visibility. Uh, I mean, it's a matter of network. I mean, uh, actually, uh, if we dismiss uh, this concept that, I mean, the citations is not a matter of, uh, uh, of connections or personal connections as not, uh, I mean, academic or not uh, um, connections in the field or in the field of study. But, I mean, if we dismiss this concept, I mean, it will be easier. And I think that also, I mean, looking at the content of our research, I mean, it could be easier uh, and to reach, I mean, more diverse uh, economies uh, in sense of more women, more youngers, and more uh, people from the global south. Uh, saying that, I mean, I would recommend also, I mean, to see, I mean, sometimes it could help also to see the affiliations of the people that uh, uh, that uh, wrote the paper that we are uh, uh, citing. I mean, it's just a matter of knowing better uh, our references. Um, what about uh, a sort of quota system? So uh, in the hiring in the academia uh, to, I mean, uh, tend to prefer uh, when we have, uh, I mean, two candidates with the same level of recognition of uh, to, um, uh, to prefer, uh, let's say, I mean, uh, we have also have in some uh, departments, some universities also here. I mean, it's not a matter of, uh, having a national framework, but uh, I mean, it's a matter of uh, the sensibility of each university, but also in my university, I mean, uh, sometimes there is this uh, effect uh, uh, and depends on the committee that is evaluating. Um, actually, I think that uh, it could help absolutely. Uh, to who, I mean, know me, uh, knows me, I mean, uh, I'm not so in keen of a uh, quota system, but I mean, this is a matter of uh, uh, survival in the academia and survival in our profession. So actually, I think that uh, a system of that could increase the number of uh, of women uh, uh, in, uh, in our universities. And so uh, I completely agree 
and uh, I don't have evidence of for Germany, but I think that I mean it would be nice to see if this increase, if this uh, I mean hiring mechanism increase uh, the share of women in uh, the department and which department it could be. I mean nice also to see if in the department where I mean there is more teaching services than research, or uh, this is uh, true also for. Uh, all of the universities. Thank you. And now for the last question, we'll go to uh, Karen Mangiola. Hi, everyone. Um, as an undergrad student, and you know, that is looking for a career in academia, and then seeing the data you showed up. <laughs> was like, oh, <laughs> um, and coming from, you know, a middle income country, public university and so on and so on, like the inequalities just uh, uh, um, attach each other. What are the paths possible to overcome this gap or these challenges, these inequalities? And what would be like the best route uh, could be, I mean, for a woman then not be in academia and be better recognized elsewhere? Or, you know, like your advice better is like, um, well, uh, you could try in academia and be disappointed or be mistreated or be, you know, I know it's hard. Economics is especially hard in, in the environment um, or maybe be attached to some of these top women economists in the US or in Europe. But even that is, I mean, as a mentorship, it's also complicated to get it in those places. So what, what can we do? Yeah, uh, Karen, uh, what a huge question. I mean, actually, I'm not in the position to give you any advice because uh, <laughs> I, I'm not young as you are, but I mean, still on tenure. And so actually, I still have problem in the academia and in my career. So actually, my main advice, and this is something that I really recommend, and because it's my personal local life, because I started not in academia. I started working in the bank after uh, after my university degree and after I did while I was working my PhD and after I decided to keep I mean to to leave the bank because actually I wanted and I mean I think that the driver of our profession is the passion so if you like what you are doing uh, in some way, I mean, you will succeed. So my main recommendation is, I mean, you have to follow also in the research and also in your uh, further studies, you're uh, going to uh, do a PhD, you have to follow what you really like, because I mean, there are not easy solutions as I show you uh, for getting the tenures. I mean, discrimination is over there always. So actually, if we do something that we don't like, I mean, it's something that, I mean, doesn't uh, have any sense at all. Uh, saying that, and I mean, this is my personal advice uh, from also my life, I have to say that, uh, I mean, my, uh, uh, my main, uh, I mean, fortune, I will say, is that I had, uh, I mean, a huge help from my mentor. So actually, I have to say that I'm here just because, I mean, uh, there are people that, uh, I mean, really uh, let me do and gave, gave me uh, all the support. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, these are uh, important and really important person that, I mean, you should have. So actually, I really think that the mentoring and uh, also, I mean, the importance of the people that uh, are around you and can help you and can help you, I mean, in different ways. I mean, from uh, building the trust, I mean, uh, and uh, saying that you can do it uh, even when uh, you don't do it. Or I mean, saying, for example, that uh, you are doing too much things and you have to concentrate in some uh, a specific five things because I mean you have to find the first this one and after you look at other things I mean it's in that it's really important 
And I mean, it's quite, I, I, I had a fortune on that, I have to say. So I have two great mentors. And so I'm lucky in that. But if you don't have the opportunity and the, if you are not lucky enough to have your mentors, I mean, around you, I mean, what you recommend you is to join, I mean, some associations uh, that are uh, working in the field of research that you like. Uh, for example, I mean, I'm here with Rebecca and I mean, we are all feminist economists. And so we are, uh, I mean, we created a committee for younger students in that perception, because we know that it's not easy and it's not easy for women. It's not easy for a woman that doesn't have a PhD from US, that doesn't have the PhD from the May and the top uh, departments. And uh, most of all, it's really hard if you are in a field that is not in the mainstream. So actually what we are trying to do is to get together to find, I mean, which are which could be the strategies, and also we're trying to find some mechanisms, some services, some mentoring services from the people, from uh, I mean, the uh, the economists that succeed in that. So actually, my main point is, I mean, you have to follow and to be followed by a wonderful person. Uh, in my case, our women. So, but uh, in your case, maybe it could be also men. But I mean, that's all. <laughs> and I mean, join, if you don't have this fortune, join some associations uh, that uh, could help you in reaching this mentor. Thank you. Just a quick note. Yeah, yes, the mentoring is incredible. When I was an undergraduate student, I knew all the post Keynesians on a first name basis. Why? Because Marc Lavoie wouldn't shut up. He would always be introducing me to people all the time. And so, and I do the same uh, as some people on here will testify. I think it's important. I did put a link here in the chat room to the heterotalksnews.com. It's got some information about some you know, organizations uh, and some journals and other resources that you may be interested in. And there are a number of excellent organizations, the Association for Social Economics, for example, but many, 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 many. Rebecca, I'll give you the last word on advice. Thank you, thank you very much. I completely agree uh, what um, Julia uh, said. Uh, I also was very lucky uh, to have many mentors. I think Christina also wants to say uh, a word. Uh, thank you for organizing this uh, uh, and keep keep believing, keep doing, keep working uh, and you can count, for example, you can contact me and we can discuss. I can find a moment to discuss with you. I think Christina wants to say yeah, something. Yeah, and I just want to say something for me. The word community is probably the, the most beautiful word. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone believes in it, but this is what we should strive for. And also, Julia, of all the papers that have been accepted and published online, yours is a uh, forming paper in terms of views, downloads, metric. So there's a, a lot of interest in this topic. Uh, Marie, uh, Christina, please. Uh, just a quick... Um... A quick comment, not as much on Julia's paper, because it's a paper which I know very well. And, um, but I want to react a little bit to what Louis Philippe has, has asked about uh, some suggestion to be a good editor on the issues that we have uh, been discussing. I think there is no doubt that Louis Philippe has done a great, great, uh, contribution to making heterodox journal and to making you know, yeah. women availability to publish and so forth. And I think that he has done a great, great job. The thing that worries me is that we have to keep the standard high mm. in order to um, have a long-term perspective on the quality of the journal. We need to be very much focused on the quality of the papers we publish. So even if in the short run, we may concede and try to include diversity and to include uh, all the issue we've been discussing, I think we have to be focused on the standard. 
And I'm saying this relating to, to Julia's article, who has been commented, criticized. And uh, what I, I, I'm very proud of Julia, and she went through all this uh, procedure with determination, with patience, and accepting a long string of criticism that she received before submitting the journal. And that's why I think uh, we should uh, always keep in mind we have to make our battle to be recognized, to be visible, and that, that for sure. And I think Luis Philippe has done a great job to help us to do so. But we have to be focused on the standard of what we write and make sure what we write goes through all the kind of criticism comments that we can get. The more, the better. And uh, so th this is maybe this against a little bit against what has been said today. Uh, I don't believe that excellence is measured by citation, but I think that excellence is something we recognize when we see it. When I think that everybody agrees when they, this is a good paper, okay? And uh, so that's what we should be aiming, try to, to write and to publish as much as possible good paper. And in order for the paper to be good, we have to accept the fatigue, the effort and the criticism that we get. And a good journal is a journal that give you very good referee reports. That's what makes a good journal really worth it. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. And on that note, I have turned down uh, referee reports. Uh, for me, if um, someone some writes a paper and submits a paper, the author deserves good criticism. So for me, reviews that are one paragraph long uh, is not acceptable. So I do try to give, and I think Julia, you got some good reviews, uh, if I remember correctly. Absolutely, yes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was really good. I mean, and also I changed a lot of my paper in uh, from the first version. So, so, so actually- The point, really the point is that Julie accepted to have a lot of, res of uh, criticism before she submitted the paper. Uh, so that, that's something that I would encourage everybody to do yeah. before submitting a paper. Pick up a couple of people who you really trust and you really um, have high esteem and let them have a go to your paper before submitting. That would uh, prevent you to be unduly frustrated just because you sent it a paper which is not still ready to be published. On that note, uh, I want to take I want to take this moment to thank Julia for a wonderful paper, a wonderful presentation. Rebecca for amazing comments. I completely enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I hope to have it again sometime soon when the opportunity comes up. I think this is something that we uh, should uh, come back to uh, and uh, under different hats as a journal editor or as an author or as a colleague. Um, and I want to thank uh, you two for having educated me and I think we all need Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for organizing that. Thank bye -bye. you. And thank you for all you. Thank Ciao, you. Rebecca. Bye. 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 Come stai, Rebecca? Bene? Bene, bene. Hai fatto il vaccino? No, no non ancora. Non ancora. Okay. Troppo giovane. Devo aspettare. Giovane.